femoral shaft fracture, intramedullary nailing with the antegrade femoral nail, AFN. The antegrade femoral nail is a double curved nail which conforms to the anatomy of the femur. The insertion point is located at the tip or slightly lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter. The advantages of this insertion point are the reduced risk of interference with the blood supply to the femoral head and neck and the simplification of the procedure. There are two possibilities for proximal locking. For femoral shaft fractures, standard locking is recommended. For subtrochanteric or shaft fractures that are combined with femoral neck fractures, reconstruction locking with two hip screws is used. Case Description A 26-year-old male has sustained multiple injuries resulting from an automobile accident, including a C1 femoral shaft fracture, which was first treated with an external fixator in an emergency procedure, and a fracture of the patella. Preoperative planning. Determine nail length and diameter. The surgeon begins by determining the length and diameter of the nail needed using the uninjured side. The patient is then draped and positioned. The image intensifier is placed over the proximal femur in the AP direction, and the planned proximal end of the nail is marked on the skin. The image intensifier is then moved to the distal femur. There, the distal end of the nail, which should be just proximal to the epiphyseal line, is also marked on the skin. The nail length is determined from the distance between the two marks on the skin using the measuring device. In this case, the length is 400 millimeters. The diameter is found by placing the measuring device under the image intensifier, which is positioned over the femoral isthmus. The correct diameter is 10 millimeters. Preoperative planning. Positioning. It is advisable to place the patient on the radiolucent fracture table without traction. The uninjured leg is raised on a leg support so the image intensifier may be used. The use of a second image intensifier will simplify the introduction of the guide wire at the proximal femur. Surgical Approach To determine the location for the skin incision, the trochanter is palpated and the image intensifier is used. The location of the tip of the trochanter and the axis of the femur are marked on the skin. A 5 cm incision is made approximately 5 to 10 cm proximal to the tip of the greater trochanter. The fascia is opened with scissors, and the gluteus muscle is split along the fibers. Reduction and fixation determine the entry point. In this animation, which shows both the AP and the lateral view, the correct palpation of the trochanter is demonstrated. The universal chuck with T-handle is used to manually introduce the guide wire under image intensifier control. Because the entry point is at the tip of the trochanter, the 2.8 millimeter guide wire enters the medullary cavity at a medial lateral angle of 6 degrees. Reduction and fixation. Open the femur. Here, the correct position and direction of the guide wire are demonstrated. Next, the medullary cavity is opened with the cannulated drill bit, which is inserted over the guide wire and through the protection sleeve. Depending on the diameter of the nail, the appropriate diameter cannulated drill bit is selected from a range of 14 to 18 millimeters. In this case, the nail diameter is 10 millimeters. Therefore, a drill bit with a diameter of 14 millimeters is used. Reduction and fixation. Ream the shaft. The antegrade femoral nail, or AFN, can be introduced either with or without reaming. In this case, the surgeon has chosen to ream, 
so the reaming rod is inserted into the medullary cavity. Since the external fixator is still in place, the proximal shunts screws have to be partially withdrawn to allow the reaming rod and later the nail to pass through. The external fixator is held in place monocortically to assure that the fracture remains stable and later to act as a joystick for the reduction. After the tissue protector has been introduced, the reamer is inserted. Reaming begins with a 9mm medullary reamer head. Ordinarily, the reaming rod is inserted down to the distal epiphyseal line prior to reaming. However, because this is a multiple fragment fracture, it has been decided to ream only the proximal part of the femur to assure that the fragments will remain vascularized. Normally, the reaming diameter is 1 to 2 millimeters larger than the diameter of the nail. Reaming is continued using progressively larger reamer heads in 0.5 millimeter increments. Reduction and fixation. Insert the nail. The nail must be inserted so that it follows the anti-curvature of the femur. The insertion handle is connected to the nail with the connecting screw using the hexagonal screwdriver with spherical head through the slot in the insertion handle. The nail is introduced manually and is rotated approximately 90 degrees between the point of insertion and its final position. Due to the curved design of the AFN, more extensive rotation could damage the femur. The nail is advanced as far as the fracture zone under image intensification. The driving cap is fixed to the insertion handle and the nail is advanced farther into the medullary cavity with gentle hammer blows. At the same time, the position of the tip of the nail is checked with the image intensifier. The external fixator is used as a joystick to reposition the fracture correctly. After the nail has passed through the fracture zone, the distal shunt screws are withdrawn to the lateral cortex so that the nail can continue towards the epiphyseal line. Reduction and fixation. Distal and proximal locking. The exact position of the proximal end of the nail is checked under the image intensifier by inserting a K-wire through the hole in the insertion handle. The external fixator is now completely removed. Before inserting the locking bolts, the correct position of the nail and the rotation of the femur have to be verified. One intraoperative technique is the cable method. Using this technique, an anterior superior line is projected from the iliac spine over the patella to the space between the big toe and the second toe. Another possibility to judge rotation and alignment intraoperatively is to compare the thickness of the cortex of the main fragments. However, in the case of a multi-fragmentary fracture, this comparison is not possible. For distal locking, the image intensifier is brought into a strict lateral position of 90 degrees. 
the distal hole has to be seen as a perfect circle, and the tip of the scalpel is projected into the center of the hole. The skin is incised. The radiolucent drive helps to center the four millimeter drill bit so that the locking bolt can be properly inserted. The length of the locking bolt is determined using the depth gauge. A 4.9 millimeter locking bolt is inserted. A second locking bolt is positioned in the distal part of the dynamic hole to enable the later dynamization of the fracture if needed. By fixing the nail distally, the surgeon can then hammer it back cranially to compress the fracture zone. Finally, a third locking bolt is inserted. This step is verified under the image intensifier. The aiming arm is now secured to the insertion handle. The stab incisions for the proximal locking bolts can also be defined after the drill sleeve assembly has been inserted through the aiming arm. The length of the locking bolts is read from the 4 mm calibrated drill bit. The correct length of the two bolts is confirmed anterior-posteriorly under the image intensifier. The insertion handle now is removed. Insertion of the end cap, conventional method. The distance between the proximal end of the nail and the tip of the trochanter determines the length of the extension of the end cap that is needed. The extension can be between 0 and 20 millimeters in 5 millimeter increments. The end cap is introduced in the conventional way using a hexagonal screwdriver. Insertion of the end cap, guide wire with hook. So as not to lose the end cap, the guide wire with hook is slid through the cannulation of the end cap to hold it securely to the 4 mm, 11 mm hexagonal screwdriver shaft. The end cap is tightened with the 11 mm ratchet wrench. The image intensifier shows that the end cap has been correctly inserted onto the nail. The procedure is completed with the closure of the fascia and the skin. Post-operative management. Directly after the operation, the length and rotation of the leg is compared to the uninjured leg. Unless there are other injuries or complications, mobilization is possible the day after the operation. With crutches, partial weight-bearing of 10 to 15 kilograms is possible.